So I've talked about i3 blocks plenty of times on this channel, but I've never talked about how to actually configure it. So let's have a look. So if you've maybe just installed the i3 window manager and you've never heard of i3 blocks, basically what it is is an alternative to i3 status, which is the default status bar. And pretty much it just has a simpler interface than that does, and that's mainly the reason that I've decided to use it. So if we switch over to my main screen, and if we go into our config folder, so that is where the i3 blocks config is stored. So in dot config, if I can spell, I can never spell, and there's a folder called i3 blocks. If you don't have this folder, you can just make it and then put the config file in it. In here, uh, basically you can just define all of the blocks that you want. So it's done fairly simply. So firstly, we have to give it a, a title or basically you just give it a name in here so what we're going to do today is have a clock in our bottom corner down here so i guess we can call it time so i'm going to build this up slowly over time we're not actually going to be starting with the command straight away just so i can demonstrate the other uh, options that are available so if we do full text full text will basically let us put in some static text so if we just want to say put in the time here and then if we refresh i3, so that should be shift mod and r if you haven't changed your default binding, then now it will just say time in the bottom corner down here. But that's not too useful. So the other form of static text we have is short text. Short text will be shown basically when the bar needs to be shrunk or the blocks need to be shrunk to fit in too many. You probably won't ever come across this. So you are fairly safe to just neglect putting this in. So the one that we're interested in is the option called command. So if we put command in, we have to replace the static text because you can't have the full static text and command. I'll explain how command works afterwards and how that interacts with the full text and other options later. So if we just run date in here, that will just execute the command date. And you can do this with any script. So it doesn't actually have to be a command directly in here. If you have a scripts folder like I do, if you put in the path to that script, then it will just run that script as well. So if we run this, we'll see that it's not going to work because we haven't given an interval or a signal to run on. So if we, yeah, basically if we just run this, we'll see that it's not gonna produce any output even though there's actually nothing wrong with this command. So if we give it the interval once, Basically, what this will say is that every time that your i3 blocks config is loaded, it will refresh it. So, or it'll, it'll run this command. So with that interval once, we can see that the text is now output down here. So we have the time, but we have an issue here. Since it's a clock, we want it to be updated every, maybe every second. I have mine updated every five seconds. There is one thing we can do here though. Every single block is hooked up to a click event. So if we click on this, the time is going to update. So say you wanna have like an application launch or something in your status bar, you can do it like this. I personally don't like it because I'd rather have stuff bound to hotkeys, but some people like moving their mouse around. So before we move on to the next block, I guess we can show off one more thing here and that is color. So if we give it a hex value of say, that should be some sort of red, and as we can see, it has now changed this to red. So as you'll see when I start showing off how the scripts work, you can actually output different colors depending on different situations. So you don't have to hard code it in here. So before we move on, there's actually one thing that I forgot to do, and that is to update this clock so it updates every second. So if we give it a time in here, so we want it to update once a second, we just put in one. If we want to update once every five seconds, then we can put in five. So we're just gonna put in one, so we have a clock that updates every single second. And as we can see, now the time is just continuously updating. So there are other kinds of intervals you can put in here. So if we look at the intervals, so if we put in repeat, this will basically rerun the command as soon as it terminates. I wouldn't do this with date because it would update every single time the date command finishes and you'd probably just crash your computer because it finishes that quickly. But if you've got, say, you're parsing a list of names or something and every time that loop finishes, you want it to output whatever the result is, then you can do it like that. And then you also have the option of persist, which basically will output every single line for an infinite loop. So if you're, I don't know, you're, I don't even know what you'd use that for. 
looping through the names of computers and sleeping every second or something. I don't know. And then basically every single time it loops, it would output whatever the new uh, output is and it would put it on the bar down here. So I don't ever use repeat or persist, but I just wanted to mention them because they were here for you guys. So because I'm boring, our next block is just going to be epoch time. So that is basically just uh, Unix time. So if we just make this block up quickly, so command equals date, you don't have a space in there. I don't believe it works with one. And then we just let it update every second for the time being. Now, basically in the bottom corner, we have epoch time down here. If you saw before, I was testing it before just so I didn't screw it up on camera. So <laughs> that's why it was already there. So what we can do now is we can actually define what the uh, whether we want this separator here and how big we want the separator to be. We can't actually change the separator, at least in i3 blocks, because that's controlled by the i3 bar configuration, because i3 block basically interacts with the i3 bar protocol to pretty much just generate the bar within our status bar down here. So if we want to disable the separator, basically we just write separator equals false, and it's as simple as that. And then if we save this and refresh our config, now the separator is gone. So if you say have different blocks that you want to have grouped together, this is a neat way to do it. That's typically the way that I do it. Or if, I don't know, maybe you just don't like the separators to begin with. So if we just remove this line, we'll notice if we refresh i3 blocks that it re-added the separator. Okay, it didn't do that last time. That's weird. Sometimes it will re-add it, sometimes it won't. So if it doesn't re-add it, then just write separator equals true and then you can remove that line and it will work fine. I don't know if that's a bug with it refreshing sometimes or what the deal with that is. So we also have the option of defining the separator width. So if separator, if I can spell, we can define the width. So say we want to define the width as 15 and we refresh. So it actually did change the width. 15 just seems to be the default. So if we change it to 50, that'll actually give us a noticeable difference. So there we go. Now we can actually see it. So I guess we can just leave that as is for now. So you might have been able to tell by the way I was talking in that video, but I was fully intending for that video to just be one long video about i3 blocks. But my recording ended up being about 20 minutes long. I don't really think that anybody wants to sit through 20 minutes about i3 blocks configs. So I'm splitting it into two parts and the second part will either be out tomorrow or in a couple of days from now. So if you like this first part, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you learned anything, let me know. If you're interested in the second part and you're waiting for that to actually learn something new, then leave me a comment letting me know what you think about that. And if you wanna be notified when that new video comes out, remember to subscribe and ding that little bell icon down below and hopefully you'll get updates, but we can never actually trust YouTube to push updates to anyone. So in that case, go follow my Twitter and Mastodon and hopefully you'll get updates there unless they decide they don't wanna push updates anymore either. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out.